have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who you're gonna be, who you're gonna be, who you're gonna be. What's going on guys, Joseph Anthony here. Um, this is going to be a video on how to grade your Fuji F-Log footage, or F-Log footage for that matter. So let's jump right in. We're going to go to Final Cut Pro 10. Open it up. And I'm just going to delete this. And we're going to import footage. So if you're new to Final Cut Pro, you go up here to the top to this little arrow once you put your SD card in or your phone or whatever and you hit import then you're gonna go up here find it and then you're gonna select the clip that you want so I want this one this one and this one and we will also do a dark one So let's start with this one. So you're gonna bring your clip down into the timeline. And here is our F-log footage. Now, instantly what you're gonna wanna do is look over here to your Luma histogram over here and you're gonna wanna check your exposure. So obviously I overexpose always a little bit um, in F-Log. I feel it's just easier to work with that way. So let's get started. So we're going to come over here to the color corrections and you've got your color board, your color wheels, your color curves, hue saturation curves. So we're going to go just start with color board. And we can see we're maxed out on our highlights so what we're going to do is we're going to bring our highlights just under that hundred mark right there um negative four let's go negative five and then we're going to go to our midtones and drop those all the way down to uh, i'm going to say negative 74. And then our saturation see when you do that it brings all the detail back so you don't even have to sat add saturation I mean if you add saturation you get this crazy vibrant image and it's gonna look great but I feel that the Fuji F-Log footage looks most natural when you do it in the exposure you don't add any more color to it um, and this also helps when you're adding LUTs and stuff like that so that's as simple as it is you're just gonna drop your sh your mid tones down and a little too far. I'm going to say about 75, 74, and then we're going to drop those highlights down. And it's all depending on how you want it to look. So I would call that one done. Now we're going to take our next one. Now this tree is severely overexposed, but you can't really tell because it's F-Log. <laughs> so again, we, we're going to go over here to our histogram and I can see I'm peeking out on our highlights which is this area over here where the sky is that's this right here and that tree this is that tree so I'm gonna drop my highlights down to about negative three negative four then I'm gonna drop my midtones back down and you can see how the color just comes right back now I, I wanna see that fence a little bit and now in, <coughs> in this situation since I overexpose so much, I'm gonna add a little bit of color to that to get it back to where it looks more natural. Just because when we overexpose, we lost data. So this is the beauty of F-Log. You can get that rich detail back with adding the color and getting your exposure just right. So I would call that one done. It's a little on the dark side. If we lighten it up, it's gonna look a little faded. So I would say right about there. 
and again we've got all our data within our histogram here we're almost down there that's why I didn't go too far on the midtones I'm only about 70 you can probably bump it up just a little bit and maybe take those shadows down so that one I would call done okay let's do this next one this next one is just the side of a barn and it's <coughs> excuse me sorry let's do this next one this next one is just the side of a barn and um, we can see our shadows here, our highlights, and we've got our little grapevine here. Now this one's properly exposed. So in this situation, when you have a properly exposed image, um, and now when I say properly exposed, I'm meaning in F-Log. If I was working with F-Log, I would love to see this right here because I can actually boost my highlights a little bit instead of dropping them down and I can still drop the contrast down not as much which is awesome I don't have to do it as much and now for this one I would love to just see a little bit more color in there so I'm gonna boost that all the way up because that's about where it was with the Sun hitting it and so you really want to pay attention to your midtones this guy right here it's I would say it's like the most important if these two were stuck and all I had was midtones I could make it work but I like this image right here. It's looking pretty good. See if I go too high, you're going to overexpose and you're blowing out. You're missing all that data. So we're getting it to a comfortable, comfortable spot where it's good. I feel like it's a little dark now after seeing it overexposed, which now I have room to play with it. I can even drop those shadows down. I can even make those shadows dark, boost the midtones. See? It's all personal preference. I would say that's a little dramatic, but dramatic is good. So I would call that one done. All right, so for the final image that we're gonna grade, we're gonna come up, select our image, drop it down the timeline, and this is a darker image. This is just uh, something I was working on, a little project uh, for Instagram. So it's a super dark image, so this one is underexposed. Um, I typically shoot on the f2.8 18 to 55 um, kit lens, a beast of a lens, so I don't really consider it a kit lens. I wish it was a little bit sharper, but for video I guess that's a good thing. So this one, we're going to want to raise our highlights. Now you can see we don't want to go above, if you come over here and you look, we don't want to go above. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see because when you're working with darker images you always have to watch out for noise which is the sensor can't pick it up so it just creates like digital noise and then it just doesn't look as good so now for this one I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation to the fingers so it's I don't look so dead there. <laughs> and then I can see I'm peeking out a little bit on my highlights here maybe come up on the midtones just a little bit and drop those shadows just a tiny bit and maybe we'll actually come up we'll go to around eight on the shadows then we're gonna come down I would say that's a nice pleasing image right there and now if we blow out I can see we're gonna be blowing out on this right here that's that that's this guy right here is boom psh, this line right here this vertical right there so we're gonna bring that down I'm gonna say right about there right about there come up again get the give it that filmic look and then we'll bring those shadows back down and I would say that one's graded you play it back all right so that is how I grade Fuji log. Now it's all depending on what I'm grading, like what the project is. If I'm just doing a vlog <coughs> or let's say I was doing like a wedding or something and they just wanted to look as natural as possible, I would go back with the simple get your exposure correct first. And you can just get by with that. Just correcting the exposure with F-Log will get you a beautiful image. And it was just that fast. I just brought those midtones down, dropped my highlights just so I'm within those histograms and I can even boost the color 
if you want more color. I mean, I wouldn't go too much, but um, I would say anywhere between 80 and 0, even negative 1 is good. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and see you on another video. I've been off the grid for days I've been lost just trying to forget her But I wake up and nothing's changed